The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 11th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day, and let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Well, you can't pick up that. You can pick it up, but you just can't get through. So sorry about that. But what you can do is you can send me an email. Now, send it off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside the Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Well, we begin our morning with a mixed bag out there. You've got the Dow up 393 points, S&P's up 17, 9 tenths and 3 tenths uh, uh, respectively. The Nasdaq is down 3 points, so that's flat. you got the Russell up 34, Trendy's up 290, Semi's down 134, nearly 2.5 percent to the downside there. New York Stock Exchange up 122. Gold is off uh, 75 bucks, trading at 26.19. Silver down 92 pennies at 30.53. Lights recruit off two and a quarter, print out 68.15. Natural gas is up 27 cents, print out at 29.40, 2.943 out there. You got the 30-year Treasury that's printed out at 117.21. That's basically off six ticks and about 10 ticks to the downside for the 10-year uh, note off at uh, trading out at 109.30. Now our leader in the clubhouse to the upside, micro strategy of 51 bucks, 20 percent. Coinbase 48 bucks, 18 percent. Mercado Libre 51 bucks, nearly three percent. Tesla 29 bucks, nine percent. BlackRock 27 bucks, two and a half percent. Our shakers to the downside led by monolithic power systems, $155 move, a little over 20%. Monday.com having a terrible Monday. It's off 16% or $52. Abvi down 23 bucks, 11%. KLA Corp down 21 bucks, 3%. And Aplovian Corp is down 13 bucks. That's a 4.5% move to the downside. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's begin our day by taking a look at New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator. We're above zero. We are still above zero. You've got... Um, uh, buyers that are in control of the market. We're not in oversold, overbought conditions or anything, so price is likely to rally further. If we look at the spot VIX out here, we'll just simply open up the chart, we'll see that it is moving just a bit higher than we were traded at on Friday. Does that matter? It doesn't matter at the moment. We're still well below the 50-day exponential moving average. The 50-day is at seven is 18.55. Price right now is at 15.23. Now, what we want to watch here is we want to watch just two days does not make a trend. But if we start seeing higher lows out here that's a signal that we're likely to see some type of short-term top inside of the equity markets or at least the S&P 500 I am not saying we're there yet just something to be paying attention to what else should we be paying attention to well let's go take a look at these uh, the daily equity futures start here here we can see in the case of the ES mini there's no topping signal that's in place we're above the one to one A to B equal CD price projection its next price target would be in the 6165 level caveat if there's a bearish reversal candle forms that would generate a sell the d point top so in the case of the nq it's actually struggling i see to get above its old td9 count top that td9 count top where we had that all-time high back on july the 11th now we have a new all-time high out here but 
price still has been unable to close above 21,237.75. We get a close above that today, it negates that signal. We're at the one to one A to B equals CD price objective. The next objective would be 21,995. If we take a look at the YM, the Dow Equity Future contract, we're above the one to 1.272 A to B equals CD pattern. Next price objective 45,241. In the case of the Russell 2000, also above its 1.272 A to B equals CD price projection. That's next price level target would be 2495 so that's what's going on on the daily time frame charts out there if we go switch over now let's go switch over to stevie's black background charts what i want to do here is we're going to take a look at the cash indices well let's start with the cash indices out here why are we going to do that well first let's change screens you're going to see the white background screens you'll have eight panels of weekly charts for the cash indices out here we start over on the left hand side what we have out here we've got the dow ym now it's got a roads momentum indicator signal that's been triggered but that needs a bearish reversal candle to identify a top uh, last uh, week, what did we do? Last week, we took out its TD9 count top. Uh, so there's no other topping signal that's present out here. And this is suggesting that we head to higher price. That's the weekly time frame chart for the Dow. We take a look at the S&P 500. It also negated its TD9 count top. No other signal other than the Rhodes momentum indicator pattern that's present, but that doesn't mean it's a top. We take a look at the NDX 100. It also on a weekly basis negated its Rhodes momentum indicator top as well as its TD9 count top. That's signaling higher prices coming. The Russell 2000, Russell 2000 negated its wave number seven top out there. No other topping signals that are, well, no other topping pattern that's in place as we speak. All four of these have um, Rhodes momentum indicator signals. Again, those require bearish reversal candles to confirm a top. Now, the semis out here are in trouble. Why are they in trouble? Just simply from a charting standpoint, what we have out here is a TD9 count top. The oscillator and change line has acted as resistance, all but with one exception. When I say all but with one exception, we've been below it since July 26. We did close above it just slightly on October 11th, got right back below it the very next day. We can see how the last couple of weeks, prices test that level, and by weeks, and it has rejected it. That level being 5307. So there's definitely some issues that the semis have out there. This is always, you know, throws a little bit of... Um, uh, a little bit of uh, worry into the uh, market's rally out here. If we take a look at the Dow transports out here, they're an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside on a weekly time frame. Can't tell right now if they've achieved the one to one level. Doesn't look like it to Stevie. That one to one price level would be somewhere between 16,258 minus 13,658. So we've got a uh, 300 point. No, we got a 3,000 point move out there. 3,000 points, that'd be 19,000. Yeah, so we're nowhere near. It's A to B equals CD price projection level. No other topping signal for the transports. They want to move higher. We take a NASDAQ composite. NASDAQ composite has negated a TD9 count top. Did that last week, but it also formed a TD9 count. Now, the composite has that. The NDX 100 does not have that pattern out there. So just something to be paying attention to with regard to NASDAQ. And finally, if we take a look at New York Stock Exchange, New York Stock Exchange has... Uh, negated its TD9 count top as well, and that suggests now we had to lower prices. So the intermediate term time frames, last week was a big week out there, and each of them have negated signals. The only one that has not has been that uh, semiconductor index, and if it could close above 5308.53 or thereabouts, well, at least it would then get back into bullish motion out here and go target that uh, all-time high. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back to this break. We're going to go try to figure out which, which is a better buy. Merck, uh, Novo Nordisk or NBS out there. We're going to take it with Apple, RKLB, LQD, and a few others. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer. 
the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, what a great uh, memorial service that uh, Tommy put on for his dad over the weekend on uh, Saturday. It was great to uh, see uh, see everyone, you know, meet some new faces, put some faces with some names out there. Um, so uh, just really a, a terrific. Uh, I wish Tom maybe, you know, hopefully was looking down on us out there. He might have been uh, fishing or uh, sailing uh, upstairs. Who knows? But uh, really just a uh, and, and Tommy gave a great little speech as well, uh, something I don't think I could have done, you know, under the circumstances. Circumstances, but uh, just really a wonderful uh, for, uh, thanks to, to all those who uh, came out. And um, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get back to the markets out here. Let's stay. I uh, start. Be, let's begin with taking a look at some of the requests that have come in. The first one is coming in from Robert B. And Robert's asking the question: Which of the three of these instruments is a better buy? Uh, Merck. Uh, Novo Nordisk and NVS, the uh, name uh, skips me, doesn't really matter. And uh, uh, Robert's an active trader. Uh, so I'm going to go through uh, the monthly charts, the weekly charts, and the daily charts, Robert. And we're going to look at all of them side by side. So take some notes as I go through this. And then you've got to determine, based on the information that I gave you, which looks better out there. So here we're going to start with the monthly time frame chart because I want to give you the bigger picture for these instruments. Uh, and then we'll go in and take a look at what else is going on weekly and daily. So let's start with Merck. What do we know about Merck out here? Well, Merck is trading below the bottom its bullish structured monthly profile it's been doing that for one two three this is the fourth month out there there's no bottom in sight out here now price is tested last week price tested a swing point robert it was a swing point from the trading session of october of 2023 volume there was 158 million shares now that low was 99.14 last week we got down to a low of 98.60 so that low was tested but it was tested on higher volume 218 million shares that tells us at least tom would teach us that price will go ahead and re test that low. That's the October 23rd low. So our price is going to get back to the 99.14 level. If price closes below that, and remember, we're moving into that swing point with volume, then where's the next stop out here on a monthly basis? Well, the next swing points get us down into March of 2021. So Merck on a monthly basis, long-term basis, is saying, hey, I might be in a sell not any kind of a buy. And Novo Nordisk is doing the same thing. Last month, closed below the bottom of its 
fuller structured profile at 116.10. This is suggesting that Novo Nordisk over time wants to get back to 78.19. We take a look at NVS out here. NVS right now is trading with inside its profile. It's a bearish structured profile or equally weighted. We'll call it pretty much equally weighted. Nonetheless, prices below the 106.64 level on a monthly basis. This may be suggesting that we head back to 95.21 out there. Now, are each of these experimental with regard to vaccines and stuff like that? I mean, not experimental. Obviously, I know Merck's been around for a ton of time out there. Uh, but uh, maybe this is part of the uh, Trump trade, so to speak, the RFK version of the uh, Trump trade out there. But each of these are suggesting to Stevie, when I look at these charts, that they're headed lower. So that's the bigger picture. Now let's change. Now what I've done is I have left out uh, mRNA. Okay. Uh, yeah. So if we take a look at that, uh, so I'm going to change. I've left out the offsetter and change lines. The reason is because it'll take me time to reset them from weekly to daily. This was the easiest way for me to do this. So we're going to go from the monthly time frame charts. We go to the weekly time frame charts. So again, we're this, we're, we're just not, we're ignoring the, the asset and change line. Not that it matters at this moment in time. Now we look at a weekly time frame for Merck. What do we see here? We do not see a bottom pattern other than price getting back to its breakout level of 99.80. It was tested three weeks ago. It looks like it's going to get tested again. 99.80. We're in bar number eight this week. What you'd really like to see this do from a weekly standpoint, Robert, you'd like to see it pierce below the low of November the 1st out there, or the week of November 1st, I should say, and that low being 98.80. If you do that, then you could be setting up a TD9 count bottom. So right now, Merck, I think, based on the weekly, monthly chart, weekly chart says, hold on here. If we look at Novo Nordisk, it's in, but it's going to go ahead and form a, a TD9 count bottom as long as at the end of the week, price closes below 118.09. So Novo Nordisk on a weekly basis looks better than Merck, although Merck may have uh, uh, formed a uh, intermediate term bottom with price getting back to 99.80. Uh, but this has the better pattern out there. It's actually a TD9 count pattern out there. Now, remember, the low of the TD9 count pattern can take place in the bar following bar number nine. On a uh, weekly time frame, NBS is uh, headed back towards support, this breakout level of support after forming a TD9 count top, 105.72. We need to see how price deals with that this week, assuming that it's going to get down there. Uh, so watch that. If price closes below that level out there, then we kind of take uh, NBS off of the uh, potential buy signal from a weekly standpoint. Now, let's go take a look at the daily time frames for each of these. So on a daily time frame, we'll start with Merck out here. And uh, Merck on a daily time frame has a TD9 count bottom pattern. So if you, but what happened with that TD9 count bottom pattern, that went ahead and formed on October 31st, completed the very next day. And what we see here this morning is price rallied up into profile resistance. Profile resistance, 103.53. The actual high today has been 103.40 out there. So with price below this level, you're kind of in a neutral type signal out here. Daily time frame, we're trading inside that TD9 count swing point from October 31st, 17 million shares there, Robert. Today so far, in a little less than two hours of trading, about two and a half million. So only probably about seven million. So lighter volume out there. But uh, nonetheless, um, maybe this is going to pull back and uh, test that uh, swing low. If we look at the daily time frame for Novo Nordisk out here, I don't see a bottom pattern. I see a negated TD9 count pattern. I do see a bit of a rally. Now, if price can close above 111.14, 111.14 is the top of its daily profile that formed on a Friday. If price can close above that for two consecutive sessions, Robert, you would have a profile change in trend out there. And finally, NBS is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count bottom pattern today. So which of these on a daily time frame has got the best pattern? Well, that's pretty simple. NBS, I don't remember what the weekly or the monthly time frame chart looked like, Robert, but I'm sure you took notes on that or you'll replay this to go back and take a look at it. With regard to NBS, I'd wait for tomorrow. I'd wait to see if, in fact, the uh, TD9 count bottom holds. If it fails and price closes below today's low, whatever that is, that tells you about a strong downward momentum move out there. So which one looks better? It depends on your time frame. I know you said an active investor. I don't know if that's a daily charts, weekly charts, what you're looking at the, out there. But there's your daily, weekly, and monthly time frame for, um, for those three. Feel free to write back to me if you've got some additional questions as well. And that was for Robert. John C. inside the Tiger's Den. Let me actually shut this one down. 
close up some resources here. But John C. and the Tiger's Den would like to take a look at Apple. So that's not the Apple charts. We'll probably come back to take a look at these charts. But the ones that uh, we want to take a look at are these here, daily, weekly, and monthly for Apple. So what do we know about Apple? We know that Apple rallied up into its oscillator and change line. That was on Friday. It has since turned down out there. We are trading below profile support. That was at 227.22. So that's not necessarily good. It was Friday, the C point of an A to B equals CD pattern. How are we going to know? Well, prices, let's see, the low of the day out here, well, we, we, we keep moving lower, 222.72. The high of the swing point is 222.79. Okay, so we're inside that swing point. Watch today's close, John. That swing point has volume of 44 million shares. Today, Apple has done 15 million shares. So that's nearly a 45 million share day out there. And we're going into a 45 million share day on November the uh, 14th. So watch that. If we close inside that with similar or certainly more volume out there, that's going to suggest a test of that swing low. But now the question is, is price getting ready to take that out and form an A to B equal CD pattern to the downside? I don't know, but we'll uh, ponder that. We'll take a look at the weekly and monthly charts as soon as we get back from the spring. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, I know sometimes I speak fast. I'm going to have to speak faster, I believe, uh, because we have about 15, at least 15 requests that are in. I certainly want to be able to get to each of those out there. So with regard to Apple, uh, you know, it's targeting that swing low from the trading session of uh, November 4th. Now, we won't know if there's an A to B equal CD pad that uh, sets up here unless price closes below that swing low out here. On a uh, monthly time frame, I want to come back to level about 220.58 for John. John, that's a key area of support. Support. We have a roads momentum indicator top from last month. Uh, here, price is testing that key area of support out there. The reason I want to watch that area, I and mean, you, you know it's going to go down by pennies or up by pennies, depending on the way that price moves out there. But if price did start trading below that level, I would then say that's going to increase the odds of a test of that swing low from October the 4th. If price close on November the 4th, if price closes below that low, again, that low being out here at uh, 219.71, then we get back to 212.49 out here. So so no bottom pattern that I see with regard to uh, Apple. It looks like it wants to continue to head lower. John, I hope that helped you out. And thanks, thanks so much for the request, the early request out there. Dude would like to take a look at RKLB. RKLB having a beautiful day, beautiful week, beautiful month out here. On a daily basis, I don't see a topping pattern. Rhodes momentum indicator signal is triggered. That requires a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top. Short of that, price should continue to move higher. On a weekly time frame, we're above everything. Profiles and sort of change line resistance likely to continue to move higher monthly time frame this month is taking out td nine count breakdown resistance at 1233 we're trading inside its swing point for the month of september in 2021 146 million shares traded that month right now we're at 93 and we are not even through the uh, mid of the uh, month, middle of the month out there so it seems like it is pushing into that swing point with volume uh, rklb now this is going to be week number five i believe to the upside right one one, two, three, four. Yeah, we're week number. Four. It has never done five consecutive weeks to the upside. So that doesn't mean that it will it will turn down from there. But it just just it suggests a little bit of caution, dude. That's all. But really, at this stage here, I'd say it'd be nothing more than just a retracement out there. Let's go take a look at LQD for Joe D inside the Tigers Den. And LQD right now is trading out at about 109.61. So what do we see here on a daily time frame? The daily time frame, was there an A to B equal C to pattern on the downside? There was. And so this confirmed a buy the D point pattern. It did that on the trading session of uh, November 5th. It did it as well on November 6th. So you're an A to B, you buy the D point pattern. Price is likely going to go target resistance, resistance being the bottom of its daily profile out there, Joe. And that would be at 110.44. On a weekly time frame, the weekly time frame found support at the bottom of its profile, 108.53. Support held. Uh, we also tested a swing point from uh, two weeks ago. That swing had volume of 124. Last week was 132. Huh? Jeez, you test that swing point with volume. Uh, so there's a new profile that's formed here, 108.53. If that doesn't stop price, should it pull back, then you get back towards that breakout level, 107.58. You've got resistance up at 111.61. On a monthly time frame, what do we have out here? Well, you have price that found support, at least is testing support, and that's the top of its monthly profile. That level is at 109.36 out there, 109.36. So to summarize this, you've got a nice buy the D point pattern on the uh, daily time frame, weekly held support, uh, monthly is trading above support, likely to rally towards 110.44. Hope that provided the information that you were looking for, Joe. Uh, and why, oh, why? Actually, I didn't really know if it was a question or not, but uh, since you pointed it out, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the NQ's intraday chart, specifically the 240-minute time frame chart. What, uh, YOI, I don't remember what you put there. Maybe it was a Gartley pattern or sell the D-point pattern. If we take a look at the 240-minute chart for the NQ out here, uh, I have it forming a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. It did it with a bear shooting star that formed at 6 o'clock this morning. It did it again with another bear shooting star at 10 o'clock this morning. So we know that sellers are trying to defend that area. What's that area, Stevie? That area would be the high at 10 a.m. 
and that's at 21-340-75. Now, we are inside a new profile that formed, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to be able to share that with you, and that's because prices got support at 21-143-65. If price were to close below that level, then that tells you in the 240-minute time frame chart we're headed lower. But otherwise, you've got a top with prices simply testing support, and if support holds, well, then you're likely to head higher out there. What else can we see in the NQ out here? <laughs> The 30-minute uh, time frame chart, Roach meant to indicate her top, price pulled back and is tested so far and rejected. It's breakout level of 21,156. That's a positive signal. The same on the 60-minute time frame chart. The 120 closed just below that breakout level at 21,196.50, uh, but we're trading back above it right now at 12 noon. That last bar finished at 10. This bar here is going to complete at 12 noon. 240-minute time frame chart, we've already covered that. Nothing less to cover, really, inside of the NQ out there. So why Watch that 21, 143, 65 level out there. Why? Why? Because if price closes below that, we're likely to head lower out there. Uh, Dan, inside the Tiger still wants to take a look at ticker symbol TVGN. So let's go watch some TV out here. Rated G. Don't know what the N is for. But let's take a look. Is this it right here? No, that is not. That was uh, LQD. I think we already got that. Sorry about that. Doesn't tell me which charts is where. TVGN. Here we go. So TVGN is going to go ahead and form a TD9 count bottom today. Thank you, Dan. And uh, uh, could complete tomorrow. But if price gets back inside its uh, profile, well, it's been inside the profile. My apology. It's straight into the center of that profile. So you're going to have a TD9 count pattern. Whether that's confirmed today, completes tomorrow with a lower low, that I don't know. But I'd say if price does close above the center of this profile, and the center being 138, you're likely to get a rally up towards 225. Five. Know that the oscillator and change line is out there, and that right now is printed at 193 on the daily time frame. On a weekly time frame, TVGN has a Roach Mentum indicator bottom pattern out here. Price is trading with inside its profile. Your range there, Dan, is between 54 cents and 281. On a monthly time frame, you've got a Roach Mentum, a TD9 count bottom and Roach Mentum indicator bottom. So you've got bottoms on all three out there. So that does look like this wants to head higher. Dan, if there was anything else that you needed for TVGN, please let me know. Otherwise, uh, uh, thanks for sharing that with the audience out there. ELO wants to take Take a look at the SMR. And uh, if we take a look at SMR, it sounds like Stevie's initials out there. You've got uh, price trade above profile and its oscillator and change line for its daily time frame. It is bullish. If we were to form a bearish reversal candle, then you'd have a road momentum indicator top. The weekly chart says, hey, go ahead and form that bearish reversal candle, would you? Why? Because it's going to complete a TD9 count top this Friday. And that would suggest a pullback to 1759. Monthly time frame looks like it'll complete a TD, confirm a TD9 count top at the end of this month. It could complete, it will complete that pattern no matter what in December just don't know that that means it's going to be a higher high out there so what do you do um, what you do here is you watch that daily time frame as long as price remains above 2154 uh, then a further move higher uh, is increased out there but you could be nearing a time where you see some other type of a top we don't have that as we speak right now so that is SMR for ELO ELO wants to also take the Palantir so I'm going to get the second round of charts set up and we'll be back in just a few. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So let's go take a look at our next request out here and see if you will get back there just in a moment of time. We're going to take a look at Palantir. And this is for ELO inside our Tigers. And Palantir on a daily time frame, no topping signal, wants to move higher. Weekly time frame, no topping signal, and bar number six wants to move higher. Monthly time frame, no topping signal, wants to move higher. We're at new all-time highs out here, but I'm not seeing any kind of a topping pattern out there, ELO. So this says higher out here. Let's go take a look at the equated ETFs from Mr. Bill out here. Just uh, wants to check under the covers and see what they're communicating to you and I. So we're going to take a look at the three of them, the QQEW. That's the equal weighted ETF for the Qs out there. Uh, they have formed an A to B equal CD pattern to the upside. Was it confirmed? Well, the swing point was uh, from uh, October 15th. Volume there, 57,000 shares. It was passed with 51,000 shares passed with 37. So it doesn't have it in volume, but there's nothing inside the equated ETF. In fact, the equated ETF is saying that the N NASDAQ 100 should be able to get to all-time highs out here. How about that? So uh, nothing uh, nothing bearish there. If we take a look at the RSP, that's equated for the ES, uh, for the S&P 500. No topping signal here. A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. So they're just confirming, Mr. Bill, what we're taking a look at inside the indices out there. Although the NQ and the NASDAQ 100 has not. But um, here the equal weight for the Dow is also signaling higher prices likely. Let me just make sure on this uh, QQEW. Let me just put this to a weekly time frame. Because it's interesting that this looks like we're at all-time highs. Are we, though? Yeah. Son of a gun. We most certainly are, Mr. Bill. So the equated ETF typically points the direction. So thanks for asking about that, because I'm sure there's a number of traders and listeners out there that are trying to figure out what's going on with the NASDAQ. It is usually the equal weighted ETF that points the direction. That's really why Mr. Bill wanted to pull this up. I'm, I'm surmising out there. So thanks for doing that, folks. You want to use that piece of information uh, as you are trading for sure. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, Bitcoin for uh, Michael P. And uh, we'll get over to those charts here momentarily just have to remember where i put them here we go we got the continuous contract that way i could get the uh, weekly and the monthly time frame if i put the november contract we wouldn't be able to get that here on a daily time frame let me just open this up looks like we could be in wave number seven 
could be wave number seven or wave number two. But uh, other than a potential wave number seven signal out here, the daily time frame is bullish. We look at the weekly time frame. It is bullish. We're in bar number eight this week. It says you could get a TD nine count top between this week and the next two out there. Um, last time we had a TD nine count top was the week of November 17th. That basically did not even lead to a test of support out there. Um, yeah, nothing else that I see. So that looks uh, bullish to me, Michael. And on a monthly time frame, also looks bullish to Stevie. We're at new all-time highs, no topping signal as we speak. So it looks to me like Bitcoin wants to continue its move northward out there. Now, you or somebody else asked a quick question, or not a quick question, but asked a question, is, uh, is there a correlation between gold and Bitcoin out there? So let me pull that chart up here on the screen. That's what we're taking a look at. This is over a three-day time period out here. And over a three-day time period, uh, the top portion is Bitcoin, continuous contract. Center portion is gold, continuous contract. Below that is a three-day correlation. And what we can see here is when bars are above zero, it's a direct correlation. Below zero, it is a indirect correlation out there. I would say this to Stevie looks like a coin toss out there. So I don't know that I would be trading Bitcoin based upon what gold is doing out there. Um, so I, I do have a number of other instruments to take a look at, but I was able to squeeze that in. Whoever asked about that, if there's additional information, let me know, or additional time periods, we can take a look at that um, uh, later. Mohammed wanted to take a look at NTAP out there. So let's move back. Uh, hopefully I'm showing the right screen. Yep, good. So now we're going to move back to the white background screens here. Just trying to get through everything. So hopefully I'm not going too fast for, for anyone. And our next request is to go take a look at NTAP. Again, this is for Mohammed. Mohammed, you got NTAP trade out 122.56 out here. Um, it is trading. Um, it is trade above profiles out here. So it looks to me like it's upside target. Uh, where it could find resistance would be 126.11. That's a TD nine count breakdown level out there. On a weekly time frame, price is below profile. Last week tested and rejected that level. In fact, so far we've been below the weekly profile levels out here uh, with a profile change in trend since September, uh, September 6th. And each rally, well, I say each rally, at least two or three rallies out here, the week of October 11th, the week of October 18th, and then the week of October 25th. Each of those, and then last week as well, where price found resistance inside that sell zone where counter trend rallies would come to an end. Knowing that we've tested it, we can't bust that apart. Maybe this is telling us we're going to head back to these lows out here, uh, the lows, the recent lows in the 113-ish area. TD9 count top on the monthly time frame, price holding support out here. That's a green oscillator and change line. So that's a neutral type signal. Wheat daily looks like it wants to rally more. I mean, it's a it's a concern that we close below or we're trading below yesterday's low, but that could just mean we're just pulling back to test the oscillator and change line for uh, before we uh, perhaps move higher out there. So NTAP on the uh, weekly, not so good. Monthly okay right now. If you close below 114.45, not so good out there. Mohammed, that's what I see on that instrument. You also wanted to take a look at AT. A A N E T A N E T. Ah, boy, this thing fell out of bed on Friday, confirming a road momentum indicator top. Today we are trading below profile, so we're trading into its buy zone. The buy zone out here, Mohammed, and likely where price is going to target 386.89. But the zone is between 386.89 and 396.91. Uh, the weekly time frame, if you get a bearish reversal candle on the week, you'll generate a road momentum indicator top. That would suggest move back towards 302. On a monthly time frame, we're you're in bar number seven um, out here. I don't see a monthly top, but is there an A to B equal CD pattern to the upside? Yeah, you'd be pretty hard pressed to put that one in here. So the monthly chart not really provide us with a ton of information out there, but the daily says likely had lower 386.89 or even 379.32 out there. Um, we're going to go take a look at PAL, P-A-L for uh, Dan. Dan F. writes in, and uh, PAL right now has a beautiful daily TD9 count bottom pattern, price consolidating with inside its daily profile. Uh, Dan, and that's between the price range of 869 is support, 1051 is resistance. You close above 1051, you head to 1277. You close below 869, you head back to its TD9 count bottom pattern. On a weekly time frame, a beautiful TD9 count bottom, price trading with inside profile, new profile that has support at 905, uh, center at 1004, and the top at 1103. So bottom there, bottom on the daily, nothing on the monthly, just not enough data on the monthly time frame chart for us to take a look at. So Dan, I hope that helped you out with regard to uh, those instruments. Uh, you also wrote in and you were asking, uh, is there any chance that QS 
is going to form some type of bottom out here. So let's go ahead and put uh, that chart up on my screen. QS is, I know what it is, I know what it is, I know what it is. I don't remember what it is. Uh, but if we take a QS, well, you asked that question, uh, Dan, is any bottom in sight? Was it QS that you were looking at? QuantumScape, there we go. Um, well, the answer is on a daily time frame. today will form a TD9 count bottom pattern as long as price is able to close below 520. Looks like a likely opportunity. Tomorrow we'll complete that pattern. So if you're asking, was there a daily bottom? The answer is yes. On a weekly time frame, no such luck out here. It is testing the swing point. You really need to see a test and rejection of the swing point from June 28th out there. Uh, the low on that, so there's really two different ways to do that. Test the low, which would be preferred at 467, or test the high at 511 and do it on less than 27 million shares out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We come back from this break. We'll go take a look at the SMHs for Nicholas, and uh, I'll see if there was any other requests, but I think I've got them all. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey, because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, listen, tomorrow I'm going to record the show between 8 and 9, so please listen in there. If you've got some questions, uh, go ahead and send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. I'll uh, try to cover those instruments during that uh, show out there. So, again, tomorrow, 8 to uh, 9 a.m. Let's take a look at the SMHs out here for Nicholas. Nicholas, uh, right now you've got the SMHs that are trading 
within their profile level. So that's between 246.12 at support, 256.88 as resistance. If we close below 254.15 today, that's its green oscillator and change line. It would suggest a test of that 246.249 level. The weekly time frame chart for the SMHs uh, found support, continues to find support in its sell zone. The sell zone between 258.30 and 274.81. TD9 count, roads meant to indicator top on the monthly time frame. The price has found support at that green oscillator and change line out there. If it could close above 259 and a quarter, we get back to its all time high out there. So consolidation on the daily, uh, consolidation with price struggling in its sell zone on the weekly time frame. S&P inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at BHP. BHP on a daily time frame. TD9 count top. Now today we've got, we formed a, uh, a wave number seven bottom. That is negated today. We are trading below its breakout level of 53.79. If we close below that today, that session end. And tomorrow, we likely head back to its lows in September. On a weekly time frame, we're consolidating with inside the profile, 52.56 for support, 56.71 for resistance. Monthly time frame, consolidation between 49.33 and 63.82. You also want to take a look at Berkshire Hathaway. If we take a look at it on this daily time frame, it's trading above TD Nankow breakdown resistance. I don't see a top in place out here, likely to head higher. But if it's going to head higher, price has got to close above and take out its TD Nankow, it's a profile resistance at 469 469.08. We're trading at 469.34. We need to close above that at week's end. If we do, we'd like to get back to its all-time highs. No topping signal on the monthly time frame, so it looks good there. It's really up to the weekly sellers at that profile level. Folks, uh, thanks so much for joining me today. Please join me tomorrow morning between 8 and 9. I'll be back at normal programming hours on Wednesday. Have a marvelous Monday. Be safe out there. We'll look forward to speaking with you again soon. Take care.